Hey, Lloyd. Um, Clint, Cam, uh, Rondo, any of those guys available tonight? Uh, Clint and Gallo, I know, yes. Still waiting on Rondo and Cam. Thank you. Zach Klein. Where do you rank Harden as the current and maybe of all time as an offensive threat? Some guy who checks all the boxes from shooting. I am not, I'm not in the ranking business. All right, so how <laughs> tough is he to guard as an offensive player? Uh, you may think I'm like full of shit. I think they're all tough to guard. Um, I do. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, KD's hard to guard. You know, because he's seven feet and he shoots better than any human being I've ever seen shoot. Uh, Harden's hard to guard because uh, nothing speeds him up. And he's strong and physical and knows how to hold you off. And um, he's he's as skilled with the basketball at that size as any person I've ever seen. And, um, and now we talk about Kyrie, who I think is probably one of the best all-time one-on-one players. I've never seen a handle like his. Uh, and that's the truth. I just never have seen anyone with the basketball handle like Kyrie. Uh, so, you know, how do you guard them when they're in isolation situations? Do you send them directional? Do you send them to help? But who are you helping off of? Um, you know, Joe Harris has not missed a three or had a game where he hasn't made a three in 71, 72 games. So where is your help coming from against three guys that, um, you know, have unique and uh, un, unstoppable ways of being guarded in one-on-one -on -one situations. Your your goal is to make make uh, make them feel you, and you know, take away what we deem as some strengths. And 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 uh, you know, you have to take calculated risks in how you're guarding and what you're living with and what you're taking away. Next question from Kelly Kroll. Coach, I, I found it funny the other night when you were talking about um, just looking at film and you mentioned, I think, the Lakers in Milwaukee and who their personnel is and yours and not being able necessarily to look at it that way. So how do you look at film against this team the last two times you faced them with clearly not having Harden and now they do? How, how valuable can that still be, though, for you guys? Well, it's no surprise. They're the they're first in effective field goal percentage shooting. So, you know, simply put, this is a team full of bucket getters. Um, no surprise. And so, you know, the thing you have to think of is, is how do you make it tough for them? You know, can we deny, can we push their catches out a little further? Um, you know, can we, can we be more aggressive uh, at the point of attack? So they're taking tougher shots and not rhythm shots. Um, so when you watch film, it's really just, you know, when they're running a set, if they're running a set, if they're running an action, you know, what is our coverage when Joe Harris runs in to, to slip out in a pick and roll or set a screen on James Harden? What are we doing in the pick and roll with DeAndre Jordan? Uh, how are we guarding isolations? You know, where's the help coming from if we need help? And are we just going to leave our guys on an island and, and let them, uh, you know, take shots that we deem low efficient shots? So there's a lot of ways of evaluating the game and the bottom line is you have to compete and you have to put them under duress and you have to make them feel you. One more follow-up, if you don't mind. I think you answered this last night, but I, I would love to hear you expand on um, Clint Capella. You've mentioned his effect. Now you got John Collins with a career high five blocks last night. The job that they're doing around the rim as a whole for your defense, how, how does, you know, what has that effect been like for you guys? Well, we started the year out having a focus on no paint. Um, you know, the reality of teams are going to get in your paint. They're going to get there in offensive rebounds, post-ups, penetration. And so the follow-up is how do you protect in the paint? And I think they've done a tremendous job of protecting the paint, uh, not just with blocks. I think blocks are overrated stats. Uh, I think, you know, rim percentage defense, um, altering shots, challenging shots, contesting shots is, is the true measure. And so when you look at field goal percentage defense, um, that's, that's really a testament to your defense. And, and we've, we've done a tremendous job of having those guys be extra helpers around the basket. Sometimes they result in blocks as it did last night and in Minnesota with Clint. A lot of times it's just challenging shots. And, and I'm really hoping we can rely on challenging everything um, in the rim, in the paint, at the rim, and as well at the three-point line. You know, we, we don't want to give up threes, uh, but teams are going to shoot threes, and that's just the nature of our league. 
but are we contesting and challenging those three? Are we doing it with discipline and are we doing it without fouling? Um, because I think we've done a good job there. I think at times we give up too many threes, but uh, we, we do have to have the same multiple effort to contest those shots. So the bottom line is, can we continue to contest and challenge shots to make every shot a little bit harder? And those two guys have done a tremendous job in the paint. Raphael Haynes. Hey, Coach Raphael from the three-point conversion. Coach, defensively with the Nets, they've given up a lot of points um, ever since they've made this trade. And as you mentioned before, it's a totally different team. So offensively, do you attack them the way you did before when you were successful, or does that change? You know, I, I think every game we go into, and, and part of the, the emphasis is attack early before the defense can get set. And, you know, if we can move their defense, we can put ourselves in a position where we can attack late as well, um, challenge their, their effort, challenge their multiple effort defensive identity. Um, you know, if we can attack early, we, we feel like we have four on three, three on two situations, the defense is backpedaling, maybe we get some layups, maybe we get some threes, maybe we catch people fouling because they're out of position. But there's, there's something to be said about attacking late in the shot clock as well. Uh, a lot of times the defense will break down the second and third efforts, the third and fourth efforts are not there. Um, and those, were, those are where you create those corner threes, uh, those behind the defense lobs and dunks. And so we have to have the mentality to, to, to be patient, to be organized, to figure out when we can attack early, but also when we can attack late. Zach Klein. Of the three that they feature, Coach, who do you think ca can cause the biggest problem with your team? Um, Kyrie, James, and Kevin. All and, and, and you know, in, in, in all honesty, the guy I worry about the most tonight is Joe Harris. Um, you know, I, I don't know which of the Miami games or if it were the Cleveland game, like he has 20 first half points and he's, he's got five or six threes. And so sometimes you, 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 you pay attention to the names and you forget about th that everyone's an NBA player. You know, DeAndre Jordan is, is back in Lob City all over again because bigs are stepping up the floor when guys are shooting floaters. Um, and we need to protect the rim. And so we don't want to give up dunks to DeAndre Jordan because uh, Kyrie's a is going to shoot a contested uh, mid-range from one of our perimeters. We, we need to keep both of them intact. We want to contest those mid-range, and we want to keep DeAndre Jordan from getting lobs. It's the same thing. We don't want to overreact to isolations and then run off and help off of Joe Harris, who's constantly making threes and is above 40% from the three-point line. And so, you know, there's a fear of all three of those guys, but there's a fear of those other two starters as well. Sounds like you don't get much sleep preparing for these guys. Yeah, we don't sleep much. Thank you.